Nee, is geen pot. Miserable Sunday, yeah. Uh, Wednesday against Millwall. Wednesday, travel down to the den, the new den, Millwall. Hoping to get back to winning ways after well, some morale sapping defeats against Leeds and Sunderland. Let's have a look at Wednesday lined up. Millwall 4 2 3 1, Jensen in goal. Back for Leonard, Cooper, Tanganga, and Brian. Savile and Donati, the holding players. Two wingers, Essie and Watmore, Honeyman giving the sort of free roll, and Coburn at centre forward. Wednesday, a couple of changes. Uh, Hequi coming in for I offered at centre back. A debut for Shea Charles in the midfield at the expense of Svan Ingleton. And a change up top as well. Jamal Low dropping into the number 10 at the expense of Josh Windass. And Ugbo coming in at centre forward. So Wednesday, back for Valerie Hequi, Bernard, and Low. Midfield, Kasama, Charles, Lowe, Bannon and Masaba on Ugbo's centre forward. That was a messy way of saying it, weren't it? Good and Benny. So, start for Shea Charles. Young lad coming from Southampton, £12 million midfield player. He, he got a spot in there with Barry Bannon. Ugbo comes in up front. You know, Danny Rowland said he weren't ready and he wanted to build him up bit by bit. Obviously got some time at League Cup in week. Um, Jamal Lowe drops into number 10 and Windass made way, he, you know, he's not been in sparkling form. So, maybe understandable changes. Um, could have been a couple more for me, but we'll come to that later. Wednesday, away from home, very attacking lineup, um, And we were hoping to get back amongst goals and uh, get some points on board. First half, well, it wasn't a great game, was it? It wasn't a great game of football, but I don't think we were horrific. You know, I, I don't think we were good, but I don't think we were horrific. It was a scrappy championship game of football. Um, and there were, there were some neat bits in there. I, I thought Charles in midfield, I thought he looked neat and tidy. And it was tight. And I, I genuinely thought, oh, it's going to be one of them games, you know, where one goal is going to win it. One goal was going to win it because it, it, it weren't a, a game of great quality. Um, they were a they were a proper championship side. They got ball wide. They tried to get it into the box early. They got plenty of crosses in. Um, but overall, you know, half half time, I thought, yeah, a nil nil clean sheet away from home. That would be the worst thing in the world. But I thought a goal would nick it either way. And I thought, yeah, like a bit of a pop second half. Maybe we can. Maybe we can. Second half, we had more at ball, and that's always seen as a positive, isn't it? Yeah, we start, you know, because it's it's how you it's how you sort of visualise those words, isn't it? And, and and stats and whatever. It's how you visualise it in your own head. So, when's he had more at ball? But what do you do with it? What do you do with it? And we had more at ball, and I think you've got a. I don't want to say credit Millwall with that, but Millwall weren't closing us down from front. They weren't squeezing a really high line. And a lot of time, there's a sort of phrase that I'm starting to hear more and more on Wednesday fans will say, probably Wednesday, we try and play it out from back. As soon as the team squeezes right high up, we're in trouble. Millwall didn't really do that. They sort of, they let us have it in that last third, and into the middle third, they let us have it. And they were set up nice and strong across midfield. Where they got into us, they waited until we got into that sort of that line with centre circle. They waited till we got in there, and then they were like, "Right, now we'll get in there." And there's a bonus to that as well. Talk about pressing, whether it's Wednesday or any other team, and the theory obviously, a you win it further away from your goal. That's a bonus for you. It's further away from your goal. Two, it's closer to their goal. Brilliant, great stuff. But if you're winning it off from there, they've still going to have one or two men back, aren't they? What Millwall were doing, they were winning it in middle, really strong in middle. But it meant the Wednesday line were just that little bit higher up, maybe a little bit more confidence. As I said, we've had some possessions, so we're a little bit higher up. They're winning it snappy. And then there's that little bit of space in behind, and they weren't afraid to win it quick and try and put that ball in behind, whether that were 
a big diagonal, which we saw him do time and again, or whether it was to just get it wide and, and sling some crosses in. And, you know, I don't want to denigrate Millwall this out of it, but it were very sort of percentages football. We're going to defend a sort of middle line, and then we're going to just break with, you know, pop ball about. It doesn't have to be nice little one touch stuff, although they did do bits of that. But percentages, and there's no wrong with that in modern football. So we had plenty of ball. But like I said, to a certain extent, I think they were letting us have it up till that, that middle third, halfway line. You know, they weren't squeezing us right eye like some teams do. They weren't set off on counter, but they were just like, yeah, come, in, come into this nice congested area here. And they'd got that bit of... They got that bit of snap. Do you know what I mean? They got that little bit about them. Let's get in here. Let's make it a let's make it a scrum, bit of a scrum in the middle, and we'll win tackles and headers. You know what I mean? But make it a bit of a battle and for fair play to them, and they've you know they've deserved it really. Um, goals. Right, let's talk about goals. It's a long ball from there, lad. Long ball. Wednesday had it out into midfield. It's a little bit of red tennis. I mean, two of our lads lose that to one of theirs and an Ed, which, anyway. And then it's played back through the gap. We're wide open. We're wide open. It's, you know, I think it's what they call transitions these days or whatever. But our line sort of coming out from that initial defensive header, and it's just, it's just a big gap. But the, the thing that really annoys me with this goal is uh, Valerie on back stick. You know, they break in. Now, admittedly, we're expecting each shot. The kid breaks in. Everyone's expecting shot. I think keepers expecting shot. Set and halves expecting shot. And obviously, Villani's at right back. Valerie's at right back. He's probably expecting shot. But done. It's a sort of miss it across goal, and their lads in because he's gambled on it. And as a defender, you've got to gamble on it. And I'm really, really disappointed in him, especially because that first game against Plymouth. Oh, bit of poor Plymouth. Yeah, yeah. But their best player that. Um, out on that side with a player called Sizolko that day. Plymouth's far and away best player. And what I like with Valerie that day is, and I think I said it in video, even though they didn't have many attacks, when they did, he was in, snap, on it, and he, he got an awareness of danger. Oh, this could happen. Oh, that could happen. Yeah, I'll take a, I'll step a yard off here because this might. They that, that's what annoys me about the goal. There's none of that. It's a proper daydreaming. Oh, bloody hell. It just annoyed me. Now, 1 0 down in any game, you're not dead and buried by any means, are you? And as I said, Wednesday's had a little bit of ball without particularly creating too much with it. But there's an issue here that's starting to sort of augment in my head is, is that as soon as Wednesday can see the goal away from home now, I get to that stage where there's a little bit of me going, all oh, right, cricket score. I never. Th- you know, and I know it's only four games into the season, but there's this little thing starting to develop in my head where we go goal down, and I don't think to me saying, oh, one nil defeat incoming, or maybe we can get a 1-1. Straight away in my head, I'm like, here we go, two or three. There's like a collapsing... Is it collapsing mentality, a collapsing character? I don't know what you'd call it, but either way, that first goal goes in, you know there's going to be more. Second goal, a corner. It's frustrating. The the goals are frustrating. You're going to concede goals every season. Sometimes you're going to play against players who are really good and they work brilliant goals against you. Or somebody spanks a wonder striking from 35 yards. What have you. These goals have annoyed me. They've all really annoyed me. What annoys me with this one is, and I, I, I've been talking about it on these videos for the last three years, and... I can remember especially a game I went Sunderland a couple of years back doing my heading. Unchallenged. And the reason they're unchallenged is we're too busy wrestling. And it's a modern thing. It's sneaked in game. It lasts, I don't know, maybe 10 years or so. All this wrestling and grappling and box. And nobody's looking where the fucking ball is. The ball. The football. The, the ball. There's a... Now, the people will argue, well, that's man-to-man marking for you. You know, maybe you could go zonal marking and that. 
But it doesn't matter. And it's team after team and game after game. You see this grappling and, and, and they forget about what's important. The ball. The ball. I know you might have close proximity. This, this doesn't matter whether you're defending a corner or attacking a corner. There's a stage on the flight of that ball coming in where you've just got to say, do you know what? Forget about him. I'm going to go and attack the ball. But we're too busy with this. I mean, the, possibly they might have had a penalty claim even. I it's wrestling going up. So it comes in. Kid on near stick, nobody on him. Helps you on to it back. Dunk. Really, really poor. Now we can talk about... People will say... Oh, Danny and coaches have got to get lads on training ground and work at this. And like I said, there's a, the debate. Do we do man-to-man? Do we do zonal marking? I don't, I don't really think it matters. I th- honestly, I think you can train as much as you want. You can do every drill you want. But at the end of the day, it's players on pitch at some stage. When that ball's coming in box, you've got to say, right, I'm having that ball. Only one player can hit the ball at a time. And it's something I've always said for years. One player's going to edit. If it's coming near you, then it's your job. You've got to go and edit. Forget about everything else that's going on. Is, forget about that crowd scene. That's coming right. I'm having it. And it's just, it's really poor, poor defending. And like I said, I don't think any amount of coaching and people saying do this and that other will work because it, it, players have got to. It's a really, really poor goal. Third goal. Communication. I, I, I will say one thing. Who's let him score at Cooper? I will say one thing for Cooper. You know, he's a, he's a centre half. It's great movement. It's really great movement from him because, although again it's a, a cheap header, there's nobody in there, and we've been cut wide open with a pass. It's great movement for him because he's actually in a sort of inside right position. The move starts. They're out on the left. It gets pinged across to the right. And Cooper makes a really good run. He, he drifts all the way across the 18-yard line into the back stick. Admittedly, there's the gap. Now, I can't remember who it is. It's either Ingleson or Smith. Somebody actually spots him making this little blind run and actually, who's getting him? Unfortunately, while they're pointing, they're forgetting that it's a big gap here and the lad runs into that and ends up putting delivery into the box. But, ugh. We've got about nine players back there and we don't deal with it. Really frustrating. And I'm not the only one who's frustrated, but I'm sure all you are as well. Danny Rules come out after a game, I've written some things here, but it is. Uh, and uh, did you see his face? He looked like I felt terrible, he says. Time to wake up. We've got to fight for every point. It's a big signal for me that we're going the wrong direction. And I've got to find solutions in the next two weeks. There was an attacking start in 11. I expect more. I think we all expect more, don't we, from the group and this and other. And this, this part of me as well, away from home, are you going to go out? And we all love attacking football. We all like this idea of going out there and getting into teams. And But we're not creating anything. If you're not creating anything, but you, you're playing in a very open style. You know, if you're playing an open way, we're taking players and you're creating those chances, yeah, do it away from home. But when you're picking a really attacking team and leaving yourselves a bit open and exposed and you're going away from and you're not creating anything, then I think you've got to look at plan B. Now plan B at the minute seems to be well we just need to do plan A better with more quality. I'm on energy. But how long do you keep saying, right, let's just plan A, let's do it better? And sometimes I think the question's going to be asked, are the players capable of, do, of doing it better? Genuinely. And it does not get any players, but he's obviously got a way of wanting us to play. And you've got to say, can they do it? And he says something else here. I think the, the interviewer asked him about maybe putting somebody extra in midfield, something we've all talked about. Um, and he says 
it's decision making. You can play well, you can have possession, but nothing happens. So we're not to have to look at everything. This is when he's asked about the midfield. We've got good players, but I have to find the best team for QPR, not the best players. And that's I think that's key there because I think to a certain extent he's done what I think he's done what we all would do if we were like a thirteen year old kid getting toys out. What's your best ones? And you know, if you, if you individually looked at our players as a squad, I don't think you could really argue. You know, team sheets come out and we're all online or whatever or in ground and looking and going, that's a good eleven, that yeah, that's probably that's probably eleven best we can put out. But it's more to football than just having your best players, isn't it? It's about blend. And I think that's the thing at the minute, we haven't got that blend, you know, I've got two flying wingers who will be flying down flanks, whip ball, sometimes we out ball. Try and beat a man, lose possession, and it comes back. And it's, it's about, as they call it in these transitions, what happens when you do lose that ball there? Who's in there? Who's in there to be counted? And sometimes you need players who, they might not be biggest names, you know. Look at the, the job that Will Volks did from January to May last season. Now, I'm not saying we should have kept Will Volks up at all. You know, at all costs, and obviously we offered him a contract. He didn't sign it. That's up to him, and I can understand him wanting to, you know, go somewhere with a longer contract and get some stability for his, him and his family and what have you. But as a player, that sort of player, I mean, I'm not talking about him specifically, but that sort of player, someone who will just, I'm going to sit in front of back four. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to edit. I'm going to tackle. And I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to be available for people if they need me as they're going past or whatever. And I'm just going to do the ugly things. And I'm going to do the ugly things really, really well. There's a place for that. Ray Keane. Ray Keane made a career out of doing ugly things really well. Patrick Vieira. David Batty. McCall Palmer. Just, I'm going to do that side of the job and I'm going to do it really well. And there's a place for that, and you don't have to be, a, you don't have to be able to take three players on. You don't have to be able to, you know, do a bonus and and crave turns. It just that. And that's about teams need somebody in there to do that job. But they do for me anyway. Maybe it's generation I've been brought up. Somebody to, to get in there and do them ugly jobs. And I think a stage is coming. We're gonna have to do it, especially away from home. At home, yeah. I mean, it's a different, it's a different atmosphere at home, isn't it? But away from home, yeah. I mean, I like Danny, he's got a way of playing, and it's sometimes I think, I think it's easy to forget that he's, he's a young manager, and this is his first proper managerial job, you know, he's been an assistant, it's a different thing being an assistant to being a gaffer, because it's not just about training pitch, and it's, a, it's about players, Getting best out of players, dealing with personalities, and understanding. You know, we talk. We heard a lot about this data-driven stats. Blah blah blah. They wear these vests that monitor everything. I tell you what, they don't monitor. They don't monitor whether somebody's nesh. They don't monitor if someone's yitting to go up for an header. They don't monitor if somebody pulls out of a you know a fifty you know a fifty fifty or a sixty forty tackle. They don't monitor that. So that's character, and I think that's you know, and it's easy for me to forget as well because you know, I've probably been to more games at Ullsbury before Danny was born than he's managed since he's took over. Do you know what I mean? It's easy for me to forget that he's a young bloke, early 30s, in his first job in football, and you know, there's a learning curve for him as well. You know, coaching's one thing. The practicals, the drills, the data, the, but getting the best out of people as well. And an understanding, I think, that it's not just about having good technicians. It's not just about having good athletes who you can measure as a metric. He covers this in this distance and this in this distance and his fatigue doesn't drop off till 88 minutes. You can measure all that, but can you measure a personality? And I'm, I'm looking at this today and... and he played in week, weren't involved in the squad against Millwall. I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, 
Do you know what I'd like to see on? And you all know what I'm going to say. Fucking chuck Pato on there. Chuck Pato on there. Put head a tackle. Put it about a bit. Get tempo going. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Marvin Johnson. I'm not singling out Max Lowe here, but... Marvin Johnson's the best deliverer of a ball in the club. He's the best crosser of a ball, bar none. Now, you can say, oh, he's 30-odd, what is he, 32, 33, whatever he is. And some people say, well, he seems to walk around with a face like a slapped ass. But maybe he does. But he's still the best crosser of a ball in the club. Maybe his running stats aren't as good as Max Long. It's not all about running all the time. It's not all about... Uh, can he deliver a telling pass? Yes. How many people in our 11 currently are delivering a telling pass? Well, not many, because we've just played three goal, three games without scoring a goal. We've conceded nine. And in this game, how many shots? I think, I think you can probably count maybe two. Two and a free kick that Baz flashed over. Our passing, the last three games have been really sloppy now. Sunderland, really good, to, excellent team. Uh, albeit they've lost Jack Clark after they played us, but you can you can cope. We're going there and losing. You're like, yeah, that's not a game that's really going to affect our season. Leeds, a lot of quality. Yeah, whatever. You know, you'd like it to have been more of a contest, but Millwall, QPR, they have to be seen as our bread and butter games that we've got to be looking at taking points from. Now, even a point at Millwall, I'd have been like, yeah, that's all right. I win fantastic, but to go there and get spanked three by three, no. That's like I said. That's yes, tactics come into it. Can we put another man in midfield? Yeah, that's a debate that'll go on and on. I think we should, but but to concede three goals like that—that that, that's mentality and character and this and that. I don't, you know, as a manager, I think he's got to look at that and say. He's talked about to Rob Stanton, I think it was about, find, he needs to find a balance for the team. He does, I agree 100%, but it's not just the balance of the team, technically, not just the balance of the team in transition from defence to attack and attack to defence, but also the balance of the team in terms of mentality on the park. Have you got enough people out there who are winners? Have you got enough people out there who can lift everybody else when you go goal down? When heads are dropping, I've got someone to keep going. Um, like I said, we're only four games in. It's not particularly to worry about this at this stage. But I think Danny himself is getting to a stage where he, he's probably realising that last season would have free it. It's the worst start we've ever had in our history. He did tinker with things towards the end and got them results. And this, but I, I think he's seen now possibly the size of the job and he's we've got to back him I don't think he's going to be a great manager but I think we've got to be aware that he's learning but from his point of view as well I think he's got to learn quick that when things aren't working saying we'll just do plan A better isn't really a plan B 